The Acclaimed versus the Bollywood Boys and the Blade. Strong, strong Pacific Northwest influence on this show. So, uh, short match. The Acclaimed run wild, commercial. Afterwards, they just make the comeback. Boom, the elbow drop. The highlight of the match, honestly, was the Papa Butt sign in the crowd. Because it's, you know, yeah, yes. Papa like, Butt. Papa Butt is the Canadian version of that, apparently. Harley Cameron then appears on the screen. She says, my rap got interrupted last week, but you got your asses beat. Next Wednesday, I'll show the world what real talent is. I am the most talented musician on this roster, and you'll be peanut butter and jealous. I do not know what's going on here. Like, I am flabbergasted by this thing, because I watched that segment on Rampage where she came out and performed. And, uh, you know, there's nothing against her or anything like that, but, man, this segment was just like... There was just... I was like, what is this? And the fans just hated it. And I don't even know what this heat is like setting up. Like, what, someone's going to beat up Harley? I, or I, I guess it's where, the like, payoff. What is this? It'll be QT and, and was, Johnny TV and Aaron Solo, I guess. I mean, I just watched it and I thought, okay, well, you know, you tried it and, you know, whatever. We can move on now. But they're like doubling down. Now it's on Dynamite. Yeah. Now they're doing this next week. She's got some video or something like that. I believe she said she had a video, yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just, listen, I've been to a lot of shows. I've watched a lot of shows. The Acclaimed is so over. And Acclaimed and Daddy S as a group, they're so over. And so, like, what's going on here? <laughs> what, are, what are we doing? Just a, it, This is like a, a low mid-card, just nothing happening feud with Harley. There's nothing against Harley either. Harley like, is great. What's happening? Harley here? is a great performer already. I don't know. Yeah, but I don't. I. I. It does seem like you could do more with the. Equipment. And then Billy goes, you know, I got two words for her. Suck it. <laughs> and there's a pause, and then Tony Schiavone goes, uh huh. <laughs> and we moved on. We moved on. Here's Eddie Kingston defeating Kenta to win the NJPW Strong Openweight Title which leads to a Moxley-Kingston video package. And Moxley's talking about the history together, the, the, the ups and downs. We survived it all. We succeeded. What is there to be upset about? We don't live in the past. I have a dream that Eddie will forget the past and embrace the future. But I won't deny reality. Eddie, he says, answer your phone. But uh, regardless, July 19th will be blood and guts. A five-on-five -five match, which means a mystery partner for each team. That's right. No yeah. Eddie Kingston. He's in the G1. And no uh, Brian Danielson. He broke his arm. Mm -hmm. Renee and RJ are there with Matt Hardy about to draw his tag team partner for this blind tournament. As you noted, it's Jeff, but not Jeff Hardy. It's Jeff Jarrett. Or as Matt says, as he butters off screen, the nuts of slap. I hate Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> That's what he said. Yes. Jeff Jarrett and Matt Hardy in this blind eliminator tournament here. You know, what's funny is is I was ranting on Monday about how this tournament started. We still don't have brackets. And uh, this guy goes, tournament has started yet. It starts Wednesday. No, the tournament. I was like, okay, fine. Well, you know what? It started on, on Wednesday at the beginning of this show. Yeah. And then uh, a half hour later, we're still drawing names. Yes. So we literally started a tournament, not only without brackets, but in storyline, we literally started a tournament and we don't even have all the teams yet. Not wrong. We were you to video on Kenny Omega. But you know, I got to say, and I'm going to sound like a total shill here, but let me make it clear. Like, if they ever do this again, I want brackets. But remember at the beginning when Darby said that thing about Keith Lee and, he, and Keith Lee said it was ballsy? This is incredibly ballsy. How Tony is like just tripling down on not telling us anything about the Blind Eliminator tournament. It's like, it's been weeks. Oh, well, you know, next show we're going to have some brackets. Oh, well, you know, next show we'll have something. Oh, well, next show. They now have literally started the tournament, and they hadn't had all the names chosen yet in storyline. It's like, this just gets better. It's like amazing. He is determined to make this thing blind. We let you to hype video on Kenny Omega. He says he is the favorite in this match tonight. You're battered, you're bruised, and oh yeah, I already beat you. I don't know to prove tonight. This is about ending you. And Blood and Guts is going to be a slaughter because I'm ending you tonight. That's a great promo here by uh, Wheeler Yuta. Chris Jericho goes out for a promo. 
in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. He's, of course, beloved, absolutely beloved. And he cut a complete straight babyface promo. I've had some losses lately. Maybe it's time to change things. And this province of Alberta is the best place to be reinvigorated. I trained here in Calgary with Stu Hart. And the crowd chants for Stu, and he thought they were booing Stu Hart. He was appalled, but he powered through. He actually was like, <laughs> he was almost laughing. Yes. Like, he was completely caught off guard. He misinterpreted what they were saying. Yes. But when, when he was getting this great babyface reaction, he's cutting this babyface promo, and he mentions Stu's name, and he thinks the fans are booing. In a thousand years, he never thought he would have to address this. You could just see in his face, he's like, you're booing Stu Hart? He's almost <laughs> laughing. Yes. And then he kept going. But yes, they were chanting Stu. Stu. And, uh, yeah. So his first match was in Pinoca, Alberta. We got here early for the show, drove up and down the highway, past Balzac and all the other small Canadian Alberta towns. Christ. Back when wrestling was everything to him, I had to remind him wrestling is still everything to me. I feel resurrected, he says. Maybe it's time to become the best version of Chris Jericho ever. But then he's interrupted by maybe my new favorite wrestler theme song ever. <laughs> it's just a drone in tone. One note. I don't know if it's an organ or a cello, but it's just this low hum. This <laughs> ominous low hum. It must be an organ. I guess so, yes. It must be an organ. Out comes Don Because this organ walks out on the screen. <laughs> it sure was. And these fucking shoes. And I was thinking about this at Observer Live. It's like he's still got a giant fucking scar on his head. Yep. And, uh, you know, he could probably go somewhere and, like, someone really professional could, like, fix that thing up. But don't. Like, this is the best thing that ever happened to him. This is a fortuitous scar. Mm. It makes this character a thousand times better. To have that big-ass fucking scar halfway down his head. It's like a... It's like a, a, a villain. It's like a, a, a movie villain where he's got some fucking deformity like the Joker where every time you see it, you know this man was scar literally scarred. Yes. And that's why he's the way he is. So he comes out here. And, of course, he, like Jericho, he's a Canadian. And here we are in C Canada where they typically love their own. And there's always, always a bizarro world comments about how they cheer for people who are usually booed. Not Don Callis. Even his own people hate this man. And they fucking hated him. <laughs> hated him. Well, he is one of their own, but also one of their own is Kenny Omega, and he screwed it. That's him. valid. That's so it doesn't good point. matter. Good point. All I know is we have like two decades without with uh two decades in this business without Don Callis. Why? Why was he not here this whole time? Well, he was he was an in international business. I, I understand he hated. He was very successful doing other stuff, but uh still Still. So he's the one, he says, who called Chris Jericho to set up the Tokyo Dome match with Kenny Omega. Without that match, you're not here. None of these people are here. AEW is not here. Jericho also notes he's the one who brought Callis back into wrestling. So thank you, Chris. You did us all a favor there. Callis says, you and I have been friends for 34 years, but I was betrayed by a coward punk named Kenny Omega. It's, it's much better. It's I wish we could just play it here on the air. But his his fucking verbiage, it's like it's like something they'd give Cora Jade, but like he's absolutely phenomenal saying these things. As you know, Chris, I recently was betrayed by a coward punk named Kenny Omega. He says it with such disgust in his voice. Now I have to build a new family, and my new family will be built on trust. And when I think of trust, I think of the greatest of all time, you slimy fucker. The greatest of all time. The man who beat Kenny Omega here in AEW. And my best friend of 34 years, Chris Jericho. If you're ready to change history one more time, I'm here to formally ask you one question. Will you join the Don Callis family? And there's massive booze for this and then of course jericho who's done nothing but a babyface promo the whole time he goes i don't join factions i create them so if you're seriously asking if i will join up with you and everyone's like he's gonna say it and he goes the answer is maybe and the fans are like what and jericho just leaves and they're baffled and so yes 
I don't know if he's going to join or not join. My guess is he's not going to join. But, man, the shit that you could do with Chris Jericho and Don Callis. It's frightening. Golly. It's very frightening to think where that might be. Anyway, great segment. Great segment. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.